Hey guys, Sven here with a new Northcast market update titling this at the edge for July 7th, 2024. This Northcast is actually way overdue. We had a week vacation and of course we had holidays in markets. So I'm back full in the saddle now as we're approaching here the full summer time. And July could be a quite a pivotal month, I think, because we are at the edge on a lot of charts in multiple directions. So I want to highlight some observations. I think you may find this of interest. So let's go right to it. First of all, just a couple updates from the previous two North casts I had put out. One was regards to the great bifurcation. And the question is, are we going to see any evidence that basically the broader market is broadening out, catching up, you name it, or if this is all a big trap? And then, of course, the big save from the beginning of June where I highlighted that 1.618 FIB on the S&P, and I may just keep drifting higher there before anything major happens if at all right so let's just update those two charts real quick for first of all on the great broadening out theory so far not a zip zilch nichts yeah we are still doodling here on this unconvincing market while the s p just keeps squeezing higher so that question remains very much outstanding and you can make the point that now july when earnings are coming in and the breast of the market needs to kind of prove its case. Can it show earnings growth now showing up into a slowing economy, which may be a, a tall task? Keep in mind, we have another Fed meeting at the end of July as well. Buybacks are out of the system as earnings are coming in, but they're coming back in August. So there's a lot of juggling back and forth. But at the end of the day, it's about earnings and Fed expectations as now all of a sudden the economy is starting to slow down rather rapidly and they may just be forced to flip-flop again to be determined way too early to tell we get new inflation reports coming here very shortly as well with regards to the 1.618 feb we're getting awfully close here i mean markets obviously disconnected from the week uh, monthly five ema but you know these technical pivots may just be magnets so yeah until there's evidence of anything changes in the market construct it may just tick there and then you know following up on the wow chart from a couple months ago we are breaking above this other trend line i mean what's stopping this s p it seems unstoppable right and next trend line is even higher 5800 so i think there's a lot of questions out there how this is all sustainable and I think I'm not the only one that's raising questions. I found in context this note from Piper Sandler interesting this week because they basically threw the hands up in the and uh, they threw up the towels up in the air or with the hands up in the air, whatever you want to call it. Basically, they're stopping the coverage of the S and P altogether because, according to them, it's become an exercise in futility. And I'll just highlight the last point here. Stock, S&P 500 stock correlations to market. The market no longer represents the stocks in the market. It's kind of becoming the running joke because the S&P just does its thing and keeps going no matter what. And you know, we've all, and I've been pointing to this as well in terms of equal weight vis-a-vis -vis the actual index, and it's just getting more and more extreme. I mean, over the holidays, we had another big spike higher, and the S&P is up over 16% on the year, yet equal weight is down only up 3.6%. It's the most divergent market we've ever seen. It's the most concentrated market we've ever seen. That was the point in the last North cast as well. And it keeps ticking and the divergences keep building. And this is just this year so far. I mean, if you look at this in a historic context, we simply haven't seen anything like it. Uh, and so the, the obvious question is, you know, A, is this sustainable? Could this produce a major reckoning? What have you? It's certainly uncomfortable in any analysis. It's not only the S&P, obviously. NASDAQ sees the same thing in terms of the index index vis-a-vis -vis equal weight. I mean, it's just massive divergence. And that's obviously all due to the AI hype, um, you know. Maybe it'll be something great. I'm not using it. I don't know if you guys are using it for anything, but so far to be determined if this produces massive revenue and productivity gains. But the fact is, this is the reality. We have these massive, massive divergences. And ironically, because of all this, or despite of all this, I should say, we have massively clean charts. 
Yeah, here's the SMP. I mean, this this is you know just as smack clean as it can be, and you can argue it's a massive rising wedge. And in any other setting, I would say, oh my God, caution, right? And discipline forces me to be cautious here. We're tagging the top of the trend line, going up outside the upper daily Bollinger Band, the RSI is overbought. You know, this this all smells like you know maybe a major correction coming here into the fall you know maybe it'll doodle some more unclear at this point but risk reward is just simply doesn't seem to be there to initiate new longs anyway uh, at this point that's what this chart seems to suggest and if you look at the ndx weekly you got the same issue there the, the, you know, the very clean channel is actually pushing above the weekly Bollinger Band RSI way overcooked. So then you also say, well, where's the case to be made for new longs at this point? Doesn't seem like there is one now. I mean, can it go higher? It can always go higher, but in terms of risk reward, probably not the best thing, especially with these RSI so overbought. But is the market overbought? You know, everybody's waiting for a correction. Well, what if I tell you there's already been a correction? Can't you tell? No, <laughs> neither can I. But if you look at some signal charts, here's the nice McClellan summation index. That's the slow stochastic, and it popped to oversold. It was as oversold as it was in April, as it was in October. You know, any other these time frames that you get, this is a weekly chart. And it typically is commensurate with some sort of weakness in the index. Right, that precedes these oversold readings, and well, there is none here, and that's because of this bifurcation with the concentration of the stocks in the, in the few. So what it does, it masks that there actually has been major weakness underneath the indices. It's freaky, I know. If you look at bullish percentage index of the NYSE, uh the RSI is at 26. Uh, well, the index kind of sitting above the 50 MA. It's it's the weakest reading that we've seen all year. So uh, don't be fooled by these high, by the main indices. The underlying market remains extremely weak. And of course, the big question is, what does this mean? And it's very deceptive because all of these charts then have room to really rally higher. This is why I think July is going to be so pivotal. And incidentally, when you look at an S&P chart like this on, on the main index, and you can see all these overbought readings and the key trend line, da, da 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 But what if I chart this on an equal weight basis? You get a completely different picture. It's fascinating. So we're kind of at the at the edge here of this trend line. Well, guess what? The equal weighted index is also at the edge, except at a lower trend line. Here's a rising trend line, and it's just managed to kind of sneak it out. It's very weak. It hasn't done anything for months, right? The, the MACD is weak. I mean, it's not extreme. It's just kind of doodling along. The components above the 50 MA remain weak. This is all kind of tightening. So it's, it's kind of begging for a decision. And so, you know, if you into the rotation trade view, you kind of want to see this really broaden out and push higher, right? Likewise, if this breaks down, then you could have, you know, even more weakening in, in the weaker indices. And of course, if big cap tech joins the club for correction and all this could get very ugly very quickly but it's notable right at the cusp here at the edge of a breakdown just got saved by a week on friday despite the main index again making new all-time highs and if you look at this on a weekly basis that week actually <laughs> just in the nick of time right so this to me obviously spells that a big decision is coming here into july um, beginning of August this is either going to break up or it's going to break down very simple as that and this is where earnings inflation reports Fed all will play an important role where this is going if you look at small caps for example the Russell also super clean that's one thing you got to really appreciate about this market despite all these bifurcations and distortions if you will the charts remain super clean Russell down on the year hasn't done anything for years right uh, broke above the, the previous resistance but couldn't really make a decisive move at this point it's still holding above these previous resistance points uh, but to convince it really needs to break out as well and needs to probably avoid some sort of breakdown because then you're looking at much lower risk here as well but also right at the edge of something happening so this coming week probably will decide where this is heading 
as well. You can make the same case for the Dow on the opposite side. You know, the Dow has been holding in. Here also a key decision is making up. You know, we have coming up, we have higher lows, we have lower highs. Friday got very close to this trend line, kind of begging maybe wants to break out, but if it can't, break down, right? So everything is really, you know, at the edge on, on key charts. And it's so confusing because you have these overbought looking charts and key resistance, yet you have oversold conditions underneath with equal weight kind of just barely hanging on. Same with the small caps. It's a very confusing picture. And here's XVG, this is the value line geometric index that kind of highlights the conundrum I was just talking about. You know, S&P keeps going higher. The XVG makes lower highs and process. It's down on the year. This is where they started. And it's trying to break out, but every time it dings it, it fails. At the same time, it's got higher low. So I want to just highlight this for you for perspective, what a really unusual this market, market this is. And like these other charts that I highlighted, XVG is begging for a decision in July. You know bears if there's any left because they've just been squeezed out by the index uh, they want to see a breakdown of this and of course bulls for the rotation trade want to see a break up higher so i think this is going to be a really really uh, fascinating journey here in july and we're going to find out a lot of truths you now the fed's going to find out truths in terms of inflation at the same time slowing economy uh, whether they're going to have to reposition their narrative on rate cuts or not for either September or, gosh, July. Uh, at the same time, companies have to show their mettle in terms of uh, earnings. There's a lot of expectations for growing earnings uh, into what is now a slowing economy. And so these earnings reports will tell a story for sure. And then, of course, Fed at the end of the month. Hope that's helpful. Uh, if you guys want to join us, how we are approaching this strategically in terms of our positioning and obviously a lot more detail in any of this analysis, you can join us via market services via Northman Trader. Let's see what happens this week with these inflation reports and then bank earnings are coming in at the end of the week as well and then we get into full-blown earnings seasons in the next few weeks so this will be uh, fraught with opportunities in both directions i have no doubt hope that's helpful you guys take care